welcome to part two of our discussion of LA's five area airports. In part one, we looked at where these five airports are now in passenger traffic, and we broke down LAX's current and future plans. Now, in part two, it's time to talk about Burbank, Long Beach, and John Wayne. Absolutely beloved by all, Burbank is the little airport that could. Currently fourth in passenger traffic, just behind Ontario, it's a quaint, dated little airport with all the 14 passenger gates and zero jet bridges. They just broke ground on a brand new terminal to completely replace the existing one, and surely it will be a huge new... Oh? 14 gates and zero jet bridges? Okay then. To understand why, some history. First, the battle over noise at Burbank Airport actually reached the Supreme Court in 1973. Interestingly, the court ruled in the airport's favor that the FAA can basically do what it wants over the protestations of its neighbors, but today, the airport has voluntarily adopted the curfew that the neighbors originally wanted, and it's even more strict by an hour, limiting flights to the hours of 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. There has been a lot of back and forth between the airport and the residents over the years, but to sum it all up, the result is Burbank can't add more gates while the continued lack of jet bridges is, as far as I can tell, a choice. But hey, this does all keep Burbank Airport quaint and easy, which is what we love about it. Of course, it also keeps it more expensive, which is what we don't love about it. Supply and demand, I guess. So wait, why bother building a whole new terminal at all if they can't even meaningfully expand capacity? Well, the current terminal is A, dated, B, seismically unsafe, and C is too close to the runway by current FAA standards. So we get a brand spanking new and much larger terminal on the north side of the airport. They looked at several options, but this location is where they landed. As I said, they finally broke ground in January, and it's set to be done in just two and a half years. Three design concepts were presented for this terminal. There was the Century, which had a mid-century modern aesthetic, which is what LAX is pursuing for its new terminals, there was the Icon, which is meant to mirror the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, and really stress the Hollywood in the name Hollywood Burbank Airport. And then there was the Paseo, which was meant to retain the more quaint feeling of Burbank. I was personally a fan of the Century, but they decided to split from LAX's new design philosophy and go their own way with the Icon. So this will be what Burbank Airport will look like in the future. The new terminal, while not adding gates or jet bridges, will still be larger and much more modern with more amenities, so the passenger experience will improve beyond the already good passenger experience it provides. So, I mean, that's great. Let's talk about getting to the airport. As you may know, Burbank Airport currently has two Metrolink stations, one on the Ventura County line that's at the current terminal, and one on the Antelope Valley line that's adjacent to the future terminal. When the terminal is moved, a shuttle bus will take passengers up Hollywood Way from the current Ventura County Line Station and the other parking and rental car infrastructure down there, which will remain there. And up by the Antelope Valley Line Station will be... a stop on the California High Speed Rail. This will actually be LA's first high speed rail station to get built, and will be the terminus of it for a while until it finally reaches Union. The station will be below grade, underneath parking lots that will be added between the new terminal and the road, making this the only LA airport connected to high-speed rail, at least until Ontario Airport is connected along the San Diego route in the distant future. But what about a metro station at Burbank Airport? There's technically a study about connecting what was previously known as the Gold Line to Burbank Airport, but the people doing the study can't even figure out what that's supposed to mean. And of course, there's long been proposals to bring the B line up to Burbank Airport. As I see it, an eventual metro rail connection could go one of four ways. First, as often suggested, the B line could hit the airport. You obviously want it as close to the terminal as possible, and nestling it in between the California High Speed Rail Station and the terminal, I think, would be possible. As drawn here, this is an entirely underground alignment with no intermediate stops between the airport and North Hollywood, the existing terminus. So it's more direct and with a single station to add, albeit an underground one, in what will inevitably be a complicated engineering environment. Plus, you'd need to pay easements to go underneath all the private property on this route. Another option would be to keep it entirely on public right-of-way, 
under the street on Lancashire with an intermediate underground stop on Victory and traveling along the Metrolink right of way in some mix of elevated at grade entrenched that keeps it fully grade separated and avoids elevation in the runway exclusion zone with an elevated station beside the Metrolink Ventura County Line station. Now, this would be a longer route with, likely, an extra station, one of them underground, which would probably cancel out the benefits of running it on a public right-of-way with fewer miles of expensive tunneling, and the ridership would likely be depressed by having to take the shuttle bus to the terminal once you get off the train. Although you'd probably get higher non-airport ridership because there's more stuff here. Between the two, I think a fully underground option would be preferred. But Burbank Airport already has a direct connection to downtown via two Metrolink lines and the future high-speed rail line, the former of which will become high-frequency, so I don't think a third connection to downtown LA via the B-line will be prioritized. What I do think could eventually reach the airport at a much more modest price would be a future K-line extension, which could go two ways. I've long suggested that the K-line, after Crenshaw North is done, could add a second rail tunnel from the Hollywood Bowl under the Cuenca Pass and I've advocated for it to go to downtown Burbank via Olive, and then run along the Metrolink tracks to Burbank Airport like this. This would get us an at-grade station directly next to the Antelope Valley Station. In working on my future Metro planning video, though, I've had my views change a bit about this because of how you unknot the future rail conversion of the Noho Pasadena line from this line. I've suggested that line could go down Chandler and turn back to the current Noho Pasadena route on Glen Oaks, and while making the downtown Burbank station complicated, it is feasible, but there have long been suggestions that using the rest of the Chandler right-of-way, despite it being the cheapest option, may not be politically feasible, and more importantly, I've been wondering if it's the right routing for travel patterns as well. I'll get more into this in my future planning video, but suffice to say, I think a much more straight-shot K-Line connection that comes up Hollywood Way could potentially make more sense you'll lose that direct connection between downtown Burbank and the K-Line corridor, but the trip to Burbank Airport, at least, would be faster. I think after the underpass, this would go cut and cover trenched beneath Hollywood Way and transition to elevated past the runway exclusion zone, with an elevated station between the high-speed rail station and the Antelope Valley station. I think a connection to the Ventura County Line station over here is unlikely, though, due to tricky geography. I also think that a myriad of BRT lines in the valley could one day hit the airport, probably coming in from either side of San Fernando. This would all give the airport excellent access from pretty much every direction. But there's another thing to think about with that high-speed rail station. See, air travel is the hardest mode of transit to decarbonize. We're a long way off from electric jets, and planes spew out a ton of emissions. One of the best things about high-speed rail is that it offers a viable carbon-free alternative, assuming the grid runs off renewables, to short-haul flights. There's a certain distance between city pairs that makes high-speed rail links viable and desirable, and LA has viable high-speed rail links between the Bay Area, Sacramento, Vegas, Phoenix, and San Diego and Tijuana. Links to Vegas and the Bay Area are already under, or are about to be under, construction. California High-Speed Rail will have stops in San Francisco and San Jose, and I'm counting Oakland Airport is under that umbrella too, as Oakland itself will be a quick BART ride from the San Francisco High-Speed Rail Station. Future California High-Speed Rail extensions will reach San Diego and Sacramento. There's been informal proposals to take the San Diego High-Speed Rail to the border, and I think that'll happen one day, and once the San Diego High-Speed Rail link is built, taking it to Phoenix in the median of the 10 will honestly not be that difficult and seems inevitable. The thing is, though, smaller airports like the four non-LAX ones in the region often have short-haul flights as their bread and butter. Now, part of this is because they tend to be linked to nearby hubs in a hub-and-spoke system, and if people are coming from further away, they'll probably still connect to the airport on a short-haul flight. So that market isn't going to collapse with high-speed rail, but it will be significantly reduced. We can see the relative dependence on these short-haul flights by taking the total passengers traveling on the routes to these eight airports, which serve our high-speed rail viable cities, well, seven because none of LA's five airports serve Tijuana, and dividing it by the total passenger traffic. For LAX, it's trickier either because I'm an idiot, quite possible, or it's extremely hard to get the data on passenger traffic outside of the top 10 domestic and international destinations for each airport. Luckily, LAX is in the top 10 destinations for 
Phoenix, Oakland, San Jose, and Sacramento, so I can get the reverse statistic, which seems to be not the exact same statistic. I don't, I don't know how they calculate this, but relatively close in most cases, so I'll sub it in. LA to San Diego, though, I just can't find, so we're going to omit that. Anyway, that word vomit is all to say, this is approximate, but it'll get the job done. When you look at the final numbers, LAX is barely affected, a little over 6.2% when you ignore the San Diego flights that I can't find data for, but I'd bet the vast majority of those are connections anyway. John Wayne and Ontario are both close to 20%, with Long Beach up to 23%. Burbank, however, is the airport most reliant on short-haul flights that may one day get high-speed rail competition, 28.5%. And with a high-speed rail stop literally at the airport, which could one day connect to all the viable destinations, even if it won't initially connect with, say, the Vegas Bright Line West Line, you can see how Burbank is most likely to see reduced traffic in the wake of high-speed rail. Given that, I think it's likely that Burbank will switch to focusing on somewhat longer-haul flights. Which, hey, I mean, I love. I mainly use Burbank for its JetBlue JFK flight. But the arrival of high-speed rail to the region is certain to affect Burbank Airport the most. So to sum up, Burbank's airport capacity and traffic is not likely to ever increase beyond its current levels, but connectivity to the airport will get better, and the passenger experience will get even better. And it's likely to start serving more destinations that are further away once high-speed rail reaches the region and the network expands to all viable city pairs. And that's it for Burbank. Where should we go next? How about the runt of the litter? Long Beach is the least trafficked of LA's five airports and has the least number of gates at 11. Like Burbank, it also has no jet bridges. Now, I've never flown out of Long Beach or the other two airports we still need to discuss, since Burbank has always been my closest airport, so I can't personally speak to the passenger experience, but I hear that it's similar to that of Burbank. Easy breezy. It's also the closest of the four other airports to LAX, partly helping to explain its lower traffic numbers. And like Burbank, it also has incredibly strict noise abatement rules. Long Beach itself can actually bring criminal charges against airlines and even pilots who violate the noise rules, so yes, they take it very seriously. There's a strict limit on commercial passenger flights at 58 per day, although there's a ton of general aviation flights as well. And because of general aviation, their shortest runway is insanely busy at 220,000 aircraft movements per year, way higher than LAX's current average. Similar to Burbank, they've recently embarked on a complete overhaul of their passenger facilities, but while keeping the number of gates static and the lack of jet bridges still lacked. All this is to say that, like Burbank, Long Beach is never likely to see a meaningful increase in capacity or traffic. In fact, it still hasn't recovered from JetBlue pulling out and shifting its focus to LAX in 2018, although it's very nearly there. Right now, Long Beach is almost exclusively a Southwest airport, with two destinations from Hawaiian, soon to be Alaska, and one from Delta. And those three destinations are also served by Southwest, at least seasonally. So if Southwest ultimately pulled out like JetBlue did, one figures it would be catastrophic for the airport. But even with Southwest's LAX space getting expanded soon with the Concorde Zero, I doubt they'd pull out. And even if they did, I do think other budget airlines would probably come in to fill the gap. So let's talk about these upgrades. Phase one was completed back in 2012 and constructed a new concourse building with an open air garden and a new parking structure. And phase two, still underway, involves the seismic retrofitting and renovation of the original 1941 terminal building, which will now be used for rental car desks, a new ticketing building, new TSA screening area, a new baggage claim, and new concessions all around a new meet and greet plaza. As of the writing of this video, it seems like the old terminal with the rental car desks and the plaza are all that's left to be completed, all coming early this year, along with some minor terminal roadway improvements coming later this year. There's also future plans for improvements to the Ground Transportation Center and the rental car ready return lot that aren't detailed and don't have expected completion dates given. So what plans are there to connect this airport to rapid transit? None. Okay, well, sort of one. There's plans to build a long BRT line on Rosemead and Lakewood, and some iterations of those plans, currently unfunded iterations, mind you, bring the BRT down to Long Beach. This would, of course, include a stop at Long Beach Airport. 
I personally think in the distant future that could get converted to rail, with the line ducking underground and taking the conveniently very straight direct path to the terminal where it could have a below grade airport station. I also think there's opportunity for more BRT lines to one day come into the airport, either from along Willow south of the airport from either direction, the eastern direction taking you straight to Disneyland and the Anaheim High Speed Rail Station, and from Orange County along Carson. The final possibility would be a direct Metrolink line, but I'm not sure exactly how likely that would be to happen. There's recently been talk of using an abandoned rail line to bring Metrolink service to Long Beach, sort of an express to the A-Line's local service. That right-of-way runs along the western edge of the airport property, where it'll have to tunnel under the end of the runway. Now, you could divert that to the terminal area on the east side of the airport before sending it west again. But that will add a lot of time to the trip to downtown Long Beach, watering down its efficacy as an express route for what will certainly be a much higher ridership terminus to serve the lowest traffic airport in the region, and one that will never get expanded capacity. So with that calculus, I doubt that they would actually have a Metrolink line serve the airport if it ever gets built. I think that it'll just be BRT and perhaps one day a Lakewood Rosemead light rail conversion of the BRT. And that's all I've got for Long Beach. John Wayne Airport in Orange County is the region's second most trafficked airport and also its most compact. John Wayne has the most restrictive runway situation of the five airports, as you can tell kind of just by looking, and its aircraft movements per runway last year were just ahead of LAX's, making John Wayne's runways the busiest in the region on average. And even if they wanted a third or longer runway, you're not really getting that without substantial demolition. And pretty much all of the cities around John Wayne are vehemently against expanding its footprint. So this is likely what John Wayne's runway situation will look like for the rest of its existence. John Wayne, and I'll address now there's been calls to change that name for a while, as John Wayne himself was a bit of a piece of shit, has 22 gates, so double Long Beaches. About 20 years ago, there was a debate over whether to keep John Wayne Airport going or use a massive closed-down marine base, El Toro, as Orange County's new airport, OCX. Don't call it that. The county itself actually voted for El Toro to be the new airport, but after a bitter fight, the proposal finally got shot down, with much of El Toro's space going to Great Park or getting developed. Also, was there really no better name than Great Park Irvine? El Toro Park, maybe? Anything? Anyway, it all comes down to, as it always does, the fact that while we need airports and like being able to use them, no one wants to live near one. Which, I mean, look, is understandable. Like Burbank, there's a prohibition on departures between 7am and 10pm, which is extended to 11pm for arrivals and reduced to an 8am start for Sundays. There are moving targets on how much the airport is allowed to grow, but at the end of the day, its footprint is probably going to keep it from growing any meaningfully substantial amount. Basically, it's never going to come even close to rivaling LAX. El Toro could have, but John Wayne won't. It's got three terminals all in a row connected to each other, so, I mean, effectively one long terminal. And it had its own modern refurbishment already back in 2011, which added Terminal C with six gates. Its only current plans seem to be an attempt to rebrand it a bit more as Orange County, maybe replacing some restaurants with local ones like LAX has done and um, elevator and escalator improvements. Fun. What about transit? Well, it has a sometimes running shuttle bus to the Tusted Metrolink station and a single local bus line that stops there. Yay. Any plans for more than that? Nope. Thanks, Octa. What about coulds? What could go there? Well, if we believe in a future where Octa wants to build and Orange County actually lets them, I think there's a few things that make sense. First, Octa should absolutely revive the center line, which was a light rail proposal in Orange County that eventually got nixed by the nimbyism of it all, with its original longer version here seen with two routing options, where there would be an off-site airport station. My more modern, and in my opinion, better version of it is here, also with two routing options and with a direct station at the airport's ground transportation center. 
I'll make a video about my overall Orange County ideas in the future, but here, let's just stick to the ideas that, in my grand plan, would connect to the airport. The Centerline is a good and obvious plan that hits so many destinations in Orange County. In my version, you've got Bray Mall, CSU Fullerton, Fullerton College, Downtown Fullerton and its train station, Downtown Anaheim, Disneyland and the Convention Center, Anaheim's future high-speed rail station, either Downtown Orange near Chapman University and Main Place Mall near the Providence St. Joseph Medical Center or the outlets in Santa Ana College, Downtown Santa Ana, South Coast Plaza, the airport, UC Irvine, Concordia University, Irvine Valley College, Irvine Medical Center, the Spectrum Center, and ending at Irvine's train station, which ironically would have served as El Toro's intermodal transit station, all on a single line. Just imagine the ridership of this thing. So many of the stops are huge ridership drivers. I mean, six colleges and universities, three or four train stations, the airport, one or two hospitals, four shopping centers, a convention center, sports arenas, and frickin' Disneyland. Come on, Okta, revive this damn thing. I also think a second potential rail line could terminate here, one that travels down beach to Huntington Beach, turning to serve coast to Mesa, and coming in from an Orange Coast College fairground station below grade until the rising to elevate here-ish and sliding in alongside the center line trucks, looking something like this with elevated platforms. As for BRT, there's so many different ways you could route things in Orange County, but in my personal version of things, the one that hits John Wayne travels from Yorba Linda to the Newport Center. But considering you'd be making an OC rapid transit network from scratch, there's fewer constraints on the ways you could route transit here, so this really is just one example. Again, Orange County Transit really deserves a dedicated video, so that'll come sooner or later. I mean, certainly sooner than Okta's gonna do anything about it. And that's it for these three airports. These airports will always be incredibly useful for the people who live near them, but they're never gonna be the next big thing. For that, you'll have to wait for video three coming soon about the LA metro area's final airport, Ontario International.